Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Dark Souls 2 PvP and another weapon showcase. This time I am using the Black Knight Great X, which was a fan favorite from Dark Souls 1. It was considered that OP weapon that everyone used, and it is very different than the Black Knight Great X of Dark Souls 1. Um, with this weapon, it requires 40 strength and 18 dexterity, along with 10 intelligence and 10 faith in order to wield now. It has a B scaling in strength, a D in dexterity, along with a C in fire. The physical base damage of this weapon is 340, the fire base is 120, and its attack rating for me on a build with 40 strength, 40 dex, 16 intelligence, and 16 faith is 672 with a ring of blades plus two. So without one, it is 622, and that is something I would not want to be hit by any time. The counter strength of this weapon is 110, the poise damage is 45 per hit, and the weight is 20 units. Now, with this weapon, there are two interesting things going on with it, in my opinion. When you two-hand this weapon and you are blocking, Instead of having a great axe style block where you know you just sort of hold the axe in, out in front of you, it actually has a straight sword style block where you sort of tilt the weapon at a 45 degree angle and block with it like that. In addition to that, the parry animation and the parry itself with this weapon is not the great axe or great sword or ultra great sword super parry as it's been called, but it's actually the two handed parry of a straight sword class weapon as well. So, that's actually a really good thing, and if you are two-handing this weapon, it makes it a lot easier to parry with than if it were the typical Great Axe parry. So, that's one good thing about the weapon. Um, the biggest pro of the weapon, I would definitely have to say, would be the damage output on this thing. Hitting as high as I have been with this weapon, it's just insane. Regularly hitting 500s, yeah, sure, whatever, not a big deal. But with those R2s, I am easily hitting 750s easily, and that is really great. The R2s actually have a decent speed behind them, and you're able to aim them pretty well with the left thumbstick. In general, you are able to aim, to, to aim this weapon, to aim this weapon with the left thumbstick, but it is a bit easier to do it with the R2s, considering how slow that they move. They move at just the right speed, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And it makes it, you know, really easy to aim at someone who is just sort of circling around you thinking they'll be fine. Uh, with this weapon, another big pro of the weapon would definitely be the fact that it's, um, it's, whatever they're called, rolling attacks. You do that spin, you can really catch a lot of people off guard with that. It really can sneak up on him, like right there, he thought he was going to be out of my reach, but no. The spin on this thing is very dangerous and can really lead to some very good combos, actually. This weapon does have a surprising ability to combo, and I decided to punch him instead of doing it, hoping he would live. Uh, for this video and for the next few that I actually do have recorded, they are done in fight clubs. I hope that is okay with you guys. They were so much easier to get you know, good fights recorded for, and it was so much more fun and I feel like they're more entertaining to watch, to be honest. But let me know what you guys think about that. That's a little random tangent, but still relevant, because if you guys don't like it that I'm doing it in a fight club, I will, you know, I'll redo the showcases I've got recorded. So let me know what you think about that. Uh, where was I? Pros of the weapon. Pros. Um, other than the damage output and the rolling attacks, the fact that its other attacks are usually sweeping instead of chopping overhead attacks... They're horizontal as opposed to vertical. That's another really good thing about this weapon because it's a long axe. It's a very long axe, and you can get people from a good distance away. It makes it very useful. Um, one thing you probably will have noticed by now is the fact that if I don't hit exactly with the axe end of the weapon, like the blade, then I won't do too much damage, and that makes sense because I'm hitting with the handle, you know? It just it makes sense. So... I would have to say that the sweet spot damage on this weapon would definitely be the biggest con of the weapon. Another big con of this weapon would be the stamina drain. This thing uses so much stamina, it's ridiculous. I found myself running out of stamina left and right, and getting myself into quite a bit of trouble at first when I was first warming up with this thing. Overall though, it's really a great weapon. You're able to aim it easily enough, 
It's got a good two-handed parry in comparison to the other axes, and its damage output is definitely very solid. I mean, right there, he's wearing the full Katarina set, and I hit 700 and, what was it, 73? Yeah. Very good, da very good damage, very good weapon. I really would recommend it if you have the stats for it. I had a great time with this thing, to be honest. Right there, 781. Those two-handed attacks, I'm telling you guys, they are very damaging. Even in the very first fight when I was fighting, um, don't remember who I was fighting, but he was wearing the Alone Knight armor, and that armor has very high defenses as far as its fire defenses are concerned. This weapon does fire damage, still was able to hit a lot, so that goes to show it does a really good amount of damage. Anyway, this is the last fight. Let me know what you guys think about me doing these fights in, uh, doing these videos in fight clubs, and I will see you guys next time.